I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Prayers in School. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, share, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass on that faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Share, sharing is caring when it's Higher Things content, and donate. A tax-deductible gift to higherthings.org keeps us passing on that faith to the next generation, and our kids need this gospel in these dark times. It's Wednesday. Woke Wednesday gives us Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things, the face that runs the place. Hi, Erica. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? It's great to have the band back together. Yes, yes. Welcome back. I'm not feeling altogether spectacular, but I'm I'm here. So because um, the band is back together, or you're just not feeling good. A little tired. A little tired. But that's not why oh, we're doing a video. Okay. While we're doing a video, so that okay. I can ask you this question: as a former okay. public school teacher, as an expert on all things woke, as our woke Wednesday guest, could you give us a quick? crash course on the history of legality and prayer in our public schools. Sure. Um, I will do my best to do this. So um, prayer in schools. Now, we've historically been predominantly a Christian nation. So whether or not uh, prayer is woke in schools, will kind of break that down a little bit. Um, so when we're talking about school prayer, a lot of times we're actually talking about um Christians being able to pray in school. I mean, would you kind of agree with me on that? Um, but we're going to, we're going to expand that a little bit. So, uh, crash, crash course quickly here. Um, so essentially about 60 years ago, almost, almost 60 years ago, the Supreme court, uh, in two landmark decisions banned, um, uh, prayer and Bible readings, um, and called them in unconstitutional. So obviously it caused a lot of controversy. Um, and as a result, school boards, many school boards got pretty paranoid about dealing with religion. And they sort of just said, we shouldn't do any of that at all. So a lot of schools, um, starting about 60 years ago, uh, struck religion from the curriculum. Uh, teachers have kind of a learn to avoid the topic, uh, and children kind of got the message that religion took place sort of off campus. Um, and so some op opponents of this have argued that religion is a huge part of who we are and, and um, our culture as a nation. In fact, a 2007 study found that only 10% of American teens could name five major religions at that time. And so the term religious illiteracy um, kind of came about and re by religious religious illiteracy we basically mean that in order for a, a student to be religiously literate they have to have some sort of aspect of public education um, about the maybe the world religions that would kind of help with the goal of improving sort of social co cohesion and understanding um so the rulings restricted essentially of the Supreme Court public school employees, but that it didn't really cover students. So, for example, there was some confusion over, could you say grace in the cafeteria if you're a student or meet outside class and study the Bible or the Koran or the Torah? Um, could religious organizations offer after school programs? So teachers couldn't um, teach their religion or preach or indoctrinate children in their own religion. Um, uh, but. But there, there, of course, as a result of that in the past 60 years, have been court case after court case um, where essentially the answer was was yes, students could on their own. Um, it does get confusing because depending on the region and the and the um, and sort of what was going on locally, um, there were a lot of sort of different rulings and interpretations. Um, for instance, a court in Ohio said it was legal for a student to wear a T-shirt um, sporting a Christian slogan that was critical of homosexuality, while a similar case in California ruled against the student. So um, the way it kind of played out became kind of, you know, somewhat confusing. So that's kind of a quick crash course and where um, 
where prayer in public schools went. Okay, well, that, okay, so that was 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. Can you sum up what's going on right now with, with God and faith in the, in the public schools? So sure. So in the in the nineties, um, two supreme kind of critical Supreme Court cases in particular sort of helped fuel growth of religion in public schools. Um, so in 1990, the court uh, the court compelled public schools to give the right to student led religious clubs. Um, and to give them the same access as enjoyed by non-curricular clubs. Now, one of these, for example, is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I think that's pretty predominant, like nationwide. Um, another one court case that was pretty critical was in 2001, the court ruled that elementary schools that welcome programs like the Girl Scouts um, couldn't couldn't ban after school um Christian clubs or religious clubs like the Good News Club, because it was an evangelical Christian club, because that violated the free speech clause. So when that happened, um, they, the, uh, the pendulum kind of swung a little bit in um, sort of in conjunction with this awareness that um, students weren't being served by not really understanding anything about world religions. Um, so they kind of went from virtual silence about religion in the curriculum um, to maybe incorporating um, learning about uh, various religions and not and it's it's supposed to be not in a way that you are um, uh, teachers are not supposed to teach them in a way that it's one faith over another right um, as well as allowing students to meet inside and outside or inside school in, in club type sitting setting. So some examples of these things that are currently going on would be um, uh, schools are increasingly including like Christianity, Buddhism, Sikhism, Islam, um, and even Bible in their curricula because of the overall concern of religious illiteracy. Um, some schools have allowed release time programs. So during class hours, um, students can leave campus or even leave instruction to go take time to pray, to pray. I know in my own public school, I had students that, um, Muslim students that had prayer passes to, to pay, to go and pray during my sixth hour. Um, they were provided a space to do that. Um, students are, uh, uh, as I said, meeting in informal Bible study groups, they're allowed to do such things. There are um, over the past 10 to 15 years, um, Muslim and Jew Jewish student clubs, as well as um, agnostic and atheistic clubs are allowed to meet on campus. Um, they have some interfaith groups that meet, uh, depending on the state. Um, so there are a lot of different, and I mentioned Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So there's been actually kind of a resurgence of activity um, uh, in, in, in faith on, on, on uh, public campuses um, sort of nationwide, which is kind of an interesting swing to the pendulum. Um, so now I've answered your questions about the history. It's time to put you in the hot, sh hot seat, my friend. Um, so it, this is kind of an important, I, I, I think, topic. So it, it I answered your question that yes, I think faith is becoming woke um, or is woke. It's part of it's becoming a little bit more part of the curriculum and it's being allowed to go on in schools. Um, they're allowing time for students to express their faith and even practice their faith. Um, my question to you is uh, who should be leading? Should should anyone be leading our public school kids in prayer and who should be providing instruction? Um, about religion in public schools. Well, what do you I, think about that? I well, okay. So if we if we if we if we went back to the 1960s, mm -hmm. um, the world was a lot different. Our country was a it lot was. different. Um, I saw a, a picture of I don't know if you saw it a picture of Christmas in New York in 1960, where the mm -hmm. buildings had um, had like the windows were lit with crosses throughout the skyline. Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't happen anymore. today. Yeah. No. Right. And so, yeah. um, so the thing, the, the thing that we need to ask ourselves now, if we were, if we used to be for prayer in school, because we were, we were, we were for Christian prayer in school. Now we should ask ourselves. And, and if you don't agree with me, you can make comments. That'd be great. 
Uh, we could ask ourselves, what prayer? To which God? Who are we right. praying to? And and what are we what are we saying when we're like, okay, we're okay with you praying to God, our God, the God who sent his son to, to Good Friday and Easter. We're okay with you praying on Thursdays to God, that God, and then on Fridays to 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 Muhammad, uh, to, to to Allah and it, through his prophet Muhammad, or 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 to the Hindus gods on Wednesday mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to, to Tuesday's Buddha Day. Uh, and if I if I didn't say that in a in a very woke way, please forgive me. What we should do as Christians is we should sort of pause for a second and go, yeah, this is probably not a good idea anymore. And what I mean by that is our God does not like to stand up next to other gods like they're in a a a um what's it called in the crime shows where they have like all the criminals standing up and you pick out which one is the uh in, in a perp line. You know what I mean? I don't know, that's not the line word for it, but it, but you know what I'm oh. saying? Right, right, right. Well, right, like, right. Like, 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 where the person identifies who the criminal is. Yes, that's the guy right. who gave his son up. Our God does not like to stand up in a line next to other gods going, yeah, we're all the same. He doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. He is the only God. And it annoys him when there are other gods because it should, because he is the only God. And to take credit, for somebody else to take credit for what he does, he can't stand that. And if we don't have any doubts about that, just simply let somebody take credit for something you've done and you'll get crazy too. Um, he's not crazy. He's right. So um, <laughs> so the idea is that, okay, maybe we should pause for a second on the prayer and school thing and say, eh, we're not good with this at all as Christians. Because what God are you praying to and to whom are you praying to? And what's interesting about this is this change in the church is relatively new. Um, yeah. If I would have taught this uh, three years ago, they would have been like, no, no, we're for prayer in school. But now, if I say this in church, uh, the majority of my of my first years would go, yeah. So somehow, recently, the yeah. war has been lost. Now, your question was, who's to teach prayer? And that's parents. Oh! What did Luther, didn't Luther have something to say about that? Yeah, the head of the family yeah. should say. So... Parents are actually the ones that are to teach their children the faith. School is not to teach your kid the faith. Unless it's a Lutheran school. Love those Lutheran schools. So um, if we if we if we sort of step back and go, okay, it's not the job of the state to teach the faith, it's the desire the, the job of the family. It's also not only the job of your pastor. So if you think that, like, okay, so they got coach for football and they got pastor for religion. You vacated your office as parent too. It's wet Wednesday here in front of my <laughs> microphone, but you know, you know what I'm saying? And so like, yeah. it's your job as parents to teach the faith to your children. It's your job as parents to pray with your children. It's your job at your parents as parents to teach the faith. Pastors there to help you, but this is not the end. The school, I wouldn't rely on them. It's not their office to do that. Uh, their Math. office is... Spanish, you got uh, it. Science, reading, uh, writing, spelling, or arithmetic. Right, that's right. their that's their that's their job. But your job as parents is to teach the faith, and this is very important confirmation. Your kids shouldn't come to the to the table empty at confirmation. You should have poured that catechism into them. That's your job to do that as parents. All right, now kids that want to pray in school. This is the last thing because we're running late on time. But kids that yeah. want to pray in school, Christians, I'm completely for that. Like, I'm with you. Like, if you want to have, like, like a group that is for praying in school or praying what's going on, building one, one and up, that's great. That's great. But that is not school's office. That is your your community group, your churchy group um, within, within the schools. And I think that kids need that. They need to know that Christians... Being a Christian isn't somehow bad and unloving. That's a future thing. I think we need to handle that. The Christian, the Christian church isn't all about hate. So hope that helps. Anything else? Absolutely. I think you did a great job. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, Erica. I missed our little chats. It's been a few weeks. But we're back. We're back together. We're again. back. All right. So we're back. So Erica Jacoby. I don't, I don't, I don't know where I am. You're over there. No. The, the, okay. You there. keep pointing the same direction. There. Okay, I know, that's go. the problem. I know. 
<laughs> Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is the face that runs the place for the best youth organization on the planet. Erica, thank you. Hey, and speaking of helping you teach the faith to your kids, we got lots of resources for you at higherthings.org. Yes, we do. Higherthings.org. Check it out. Check it out. That was good. That was good. Contemplate this. Think about this. Pray with your kids. Kids, pray with your parents. Pray with one another. Don't rely on the school to teach the faith. It's your task as parents to to, to learn to, to teach the faith. And it's your uh, task as young people to learn the faith from your parents, from your pastor, from your church, and from each other. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>